Hello everybody, Jesse here from Jason's Inspired. Hope you guys are doing good. So guys, I'm going to be showing today how to set up a Linux environment on Windows VS Code. And um, this is actually the setup I use because it gives me the flexibility of using both the power of Windows applications and Linux applications simultaneously, okay, without having to use a virtual machine or a dual boot partition. So it has made my life so much more easier and I'm hoping it's also going to make yours too. So without further ado, let's just get started. So for those who this may be new to, let me show you how to download Visual Studio Code, okay? So come right here to your search field and type in code.visualstudio.com and hit enter. So it should bring you to a page like this. But before I go on, I just want you guys to know that every link I'll be using in this tutorial, I've linked them in the description below. So feel free to copy and paste them, okay? So right here, it says download for Windows Stable Build. Um, if you're on another operating system, okay, you can always click down this drop down button. And then you can see your operating system right here. But since this video is still limited for Windows, I'm just going to click on download for Windows, okay? So it should bring you to this page right here where there's your thanks for downloading VS Code for Windows. And then if you check the bottom left of your screen, you should see it's currently downloading, okay? So I'm just going to pause my video right now and I'll get back to you once it's done. So if you're done downloading, um, click on the application to install it, okay? And then it brings up the license agreement so go ahead and read it if you wish and then click on i accept the agreement and next so um i have my um these checkboxes that specifies the kinds of operations uh, my visual studio code will be doing so i actually like all the services that is rendering so i'm going to check all my checkboxes and click on next okay and then click on install just like that so you should have a page like this that says um click finish to exit setup so i'm not going to launch visual studio code okay i'm just going to click on finish and that's all so next we will need to install linux on windows with wsl so wsl stands for windows subsystem for linux and there are two ways to do this the simple way and the manual way to do it the simple way it requires that you have a windows 11 or a windows 10 version 2004 and higher with a build of 19041 and higher. So how do you check the build of your operating system? Go ahead and hit the Windows logo key plus R. So if I do that, it's gonna bring up this dialog box and type in W-I-N-V-E-R just like you have right here and hit OK. And then it tells me right here, I have a version 20H2 with a build of 19042.1526, which is actually higher than this. So it means I can do this the simple way. So let me just show you how to do it. So all you need to do is come right here and enter this command in an administrator PowerShell or Windows command prompt and then restart your machine. So this command will enable the features necessary to run WSL. And just in addition to this, it's going to enable WSL2 as the version of WSL, which happens to be the latest version of WSL at the time of this video. And it will install the Ubuntu distribution of Linux, which can actually be changed later. Okay, so once you're done, go ahead and restart your system. And that's also um, come right here to your search bar and type in PAR. You should see PowerShell. So once you see it, come right here to run as administrator. So you should see an interface like this. So go ahead and type in WSL install or just paste in the command. Hit enter. It's going to do the necessary setup. And then once it's done, restart your machine and you're good to go. So if you are able to do this using the previous step, feel free to skip this one and go to the next frame. But just in case you still want to install it manually, the first step will require us to enable the Windows subsystem for Linux. And to do that, open up the PowerShell as an administrator and enter this command. So I've linked this in the description below. So copy it and then come right here and type in PowerShell and run as administrator. So you should have an interface like this. So go ahead and paste that command and hit enter. So it tells me the operation completed successfully. So you should have something like this. So if you have it, let's go over to the next step. So the next step is to check the requirements for running WSL2. And I just have to mention that this step is actually optional because um, WSL1 is actually effective in its own sense, but it's advisable that if you want to get the best experience of Linux on Windows at this time of this video, you update to WSL2. So to run WSL2, you must be running Windows 11 or Windows 10. And for 64-bit systems on Windows 10, you must have a version of 1903 or later with a build of 1836 or later. 
and you can also see the specifications for ARM64 systems. And to check the version and the build of your operating system, go ahead and hit the Windows logo key and arrow. So just like you have right here and type in W-I-N-V-E-R, okay? So I'm just gonna do that and then hit okay. So it shows me right here the version and then the build of my operating system. So I have 19242, which happens to be greater than this. Okay, so I actually passed to run WSL2 on my system. So if that's done, the next thing is to enable the virtual machine feature. Okay, so to do that, go ahead and open up PowerShell as an administrator and copy this command. So I've also linked this in the description below. So go ahead and copy it, paste it right here and hit enter so when it's done you should have the operation completed successfully just like this so to complete the installation we need to restart our machine right now so go ahead and restart yours and then we'll continue with step four when you're back so next we need to download the linux kernel updates package so right here i have a link to the latest package for a 64-bit machine and just in case you're on an arm 64 machine go ahead and use this link instead so i have it linked in the description below okay and if you're not sure of the kind of machine you have go ahead and run this command right here okay on PowerShell. i've also linked this in the description below and it's going to show you the kind of machine you're running so right now since i'm on a 64-bit machine when i run this command it showed me right here that i'm on, i have a 64-bit pc okay so i'm just going to click right here right now so once you're done downloading it go ahead and click on it to install so click on next and click on finish Next, let's go ahead and set WSL2 as our default version. So to do that, go ahead and copy this command and paste it on PowerShell. So it tells you um, um, the operation completed successfully. So next, we need to install a Linux distribution of our choice. So to do that, we're going to open up the Microsoft Store. So come to your search bar right here and type in micro. So you should see Microsoft Store. So just open it up. So you should see something like this. So I'm going to search for Ubuntu. So I'm just going to type in Ubuntu. And um, at the time of this video, I think this is the latest version, this um, Ubuntu 22.041 LTS. I'm just going to click on this and I'm going to click on Get. So once you're done installing it, you should have this button right here which says Open. So go ahead and click on it to launch it. So it tells you right here, Unpacking the Distro. So if I click on this drop down button right here, it says, please enable the virtual machine platform Windows feature. So this has been enabled and ensure virtualization is enabled in the BIOS. So um, currently I haven't enabled virtualization in the BIOS. That's why the installation is not actually completing. So if you haven't also, let me just show you how to rectify this. So close up everything and open up your PowerShell and type in this command. Hit enter. So right now we're trying to confirm the state of our virtualization. So check this guys where it says Hyper-V requirements. It says right here, virtualization enabled in firmware, no. So it means our virtualization is not enabled. So right now let's go ahead and enable it. So come right here to your search bar and type in recovery. And look for this one that says recovery options with system settings under it and click on it. So it brings you to this page where it says advanced startup and then click on restart now. So once you get right here to this window, come right here to troubleshoot. Hit enter. Come right here to advanced options. Hit enter. And then come right here to UEFI firmware settings. Hit enter. So navigate with your um, arrow keys and then click, click on restart. So next, click on um, F10 BIOS Setup. Next, use your right arrow key and toggle to the Configuration tab. Just like that. And then scroll down to Virtualization Technology. So if you get there right now with your down arrow key, you realize that it shows disabled. So go ahead and hit Enter. So it gives us a, um, the option of toggling to Enable. So I'm just going to hit the down arrow key now I'm going to hit enter to select enabled. Next, use your right arrow key and navigate again to exits. And then it says right here, save changes and exit. So because I want to save my changes, I'm going to hit enter 
and I'm also going to hit enter for yes. So if your system has rebooted, go ahead and open up your Windows PowerShell again and impute this command. So it tells us a hypervisor has been detected, okay? So let's go ahead right now and open up our Ubuntu. So once it's done installing, it should open up this page that allows you to select your language. So I'm just going to come down right here to English, okay? And I'm going to hit enter. It's going to ask me my name. Uh, my username and then the password so i'm just going to change my username right now to uh, match the rejects pattern that is given to us so i'm going to type in just inspired you know so just take note that this field cannot accept you know capital letters where so there are a bunch of characters that this field cannot accept so make sure that you comply with the rejects pattern and then come right here to choose your password so i'm just going to type in my password right now so this page allows you to add more customization to your Ubuntu WSL, but I'm just going to stick with the default. So I'm just going to hit enter. And then it tells me applying changes. So it tells me setup complete. All settings will take effect after next restart of Ubuntu. So just go ahead and hit enter. And it tells me already rebooting. Installation successful. And here we are. We are currently in our own shell program right here okay guys it's time for some good stuff so go ahead right here and type in code just like that so this should open up visual studio code right here from your terminal so now you should be inside visual studio code so you can always set your theme from here i like a dark theme so i'm just going to click on next section so i'm also going to click on next section don't want to change anything um so you can install git right here already so I can do that, install git and um, markdown. So to hook up VS Code to WSL, you need to install this extension. So come right here to this icon. Okay, so if you hover over it, you should see extensions. Click on it. And then come right here and type in WSL, just like that. So once you type this in, you should see this extension right here from Microsoft. Okay, so go ahead and click on it. So go ahead and install this extension. Okay, so right now, if you have it installed, come right here to your search bar and type in Ubuntu. So you should see the app which you, which you installed previously. Click on it. And then right here, let's just go ahead and create a directory. So mkdi arrow, let me just call this example. And I'm going to cd into it. Right now, I'm going to type in code full stop okay full stop stands for the present working directory i'm going to hit enter so you should have a page like this that asks you if you trust the authors of this file and all that so i'm just going to click trust the authors of all files in parents folder just inspired i'm going to click yes i trust the authors so we are currently in vs code but this environment which you see currently is running in ubuntu 22.04 wsl2 which you can see right here and this has a variety of implications, one of them being that we can access the Linux file system directly from our VS Code GUI. And then we can open up a Linux based terminal right here inside VS Code. So to show you what I mean, come right here to the terminal tab, click on it, click on new terminal. So as you can see right here, this opens up a Linux based terminal with bash running on it. So if you check right here, it says bash, which you can see. Let's go ahead right now and open up a file. So I'm just going to call this demo. So click on this icon which says new file. And let's just call this demo, okay? And right now, I can specify my shebang and the parts of my bash interpreter, okay? And then let me just type in a simple command like hello world. Save this. Next, let's go ahead and make our script executable, okay? And let's run it. So as you can see right here, I have Hello World printed out on my standard outputs. So guys, this is how to set up a Linux environment on Windows VS Code with WSL2. Um, there's still a bunch of settings and extensions you need to implement to optimize your experience in various programming languages, but I think this is a good place to just get started. Alright, so if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like, subscribe if you're new here, okay? And that is from me for now. I'll see you in the next one.